में पीएचडी वर्क अंडर थीम सेवन विच इज ऑन डी आर पार्टिसिपेशन इन होलसेल इलेक्ट्रिसिटी मार्केट यूटिलाइजिंग जीएसओ डीएसओ कोऑर्डिनेशन सो हेर आर द कंटेंट्स ऑफ माय प्रेजेंटेशन initially i'll discuss about motivation and then about the coordinated market operations framework that we have proposed in our work coming to the motivation that has led to uh, study this work is uh, the increased penetration of ders uh, definitely which have uh, transformed passive distribution networks into proactive players in the electricity market Uh, for managing these resources in the electricity market there is an emergence of dso's that are acting as an aggregator and taking charge of the dispatch of all der's within a distribution network so in this respect if we are having uh, multiple dso's in our network and uh, for every distribution system and they are all are having their individual local objectives and uh, providing their local dispatches then in that case there could be a possibility that we have a lack of system wide cooperation and uh, there could be conflict within the objective of dso's and tso so in this regard uh, to improve the overall efficiency and reliability of entire power system it is important that tso uh, should coordinate with all the dso's to achieve certain social objectives thus we need to facilitate uh, exchange of power flows and control signals at the bus of common connection among tso and gso's Uh, so uh, the integration of ders that has led us uh, to uh, uh, design a energy market framework utilizing tso dso coordination uh, what all we need to focus upon is uh, we have to make an optimal and effective utilization of all the resources available in distribution system uh, we need to define the role of different entities involved in this market framework we need to analyze the overall benefits uh, derived from this framework and then to study various possible ways of communication between tso and gso as per now many countries have explored different options for practical implementation of tso and dso coordination uh, there are uh, five different uh, schemes which are widely discussed across the globe these are like tso model in which tso is the leader and they are directly interacting with ders but having no control over congestion management uh, occurring in taking place in distribution network Uh, other one could be dso led model in which dso are managing the local congestion and transferring the unused resources to transmission system Uh, the next could be tso dso hybrid model in which tso is managing uh, congestion and balancing and transmission level while dso is managing congestion and balancing at the distribution level fourth one could be common tso dso model in which tso and dso together are managing the services with certain coordination with each other and fifth could could be a third party model in which tso and dso are procuring ancillary services from a market operated by a third operator so uh, in our studies and in our work we have focused upon the fourth type of model common tso dso model in which tso and dso together uh, taking care of uh, uh, balancing and congestion services and clearing the markets uh in uh, so here comes the uh, proposed market framework uh, the typical integrated power system could look like this in which we are having a tra transmission system uh, having uh, directly connected uh, generating units and consumers and uh, then we can have a distribution system in which we can have multiple d type of ders like wind power sources energy storage devices dg solar power aggregator flexible consumers uh, which could be an equivalently represented as a generating unit and a load unit uh they are uh, interacting with their respective dso's and transmission system entities are kind of interacting directly with the tso's uh then later we can have a communication between tso's and dso's as well and the flow of power and data flow could possibly be represented uh, as shown in this figure uh if we'll see uh, the uh, type of interaction that could be there between tso's and dso is like tso is taking control of their own aggregators and ders and uh, concentrating on its own um, uh, objective function similarly tso can have control over its uh, own consumers and generators and uh, uh, what we need to facilitate is the exchange of uh, uh, information such as price and power between transmission and distribution system so uh, these are the publications that we have come, uh, that are under revision uh, based on this work so today i'm going to present uh, a work which is mainly which is represented in the second publication uh now coming to the market uh, possible types of coordinated market so the broader in the broader view we can say there could be possibly two types of coordinated markets uh, one could be real power uh, markets or we can say energy markets other one could be real power plus reserves market uh 
then in both of the types of market we can have day ahead and real time both market frameworks uh, presently we are focusing upon uh, day ahead energy markets in that also we can have uh, two types of possible market uh, architectures based on the uh, direction of power flow so uh, or based on the uh, quantities being traded or, or, or bid or offered so uh, dso could act as an importer and where they are offering only the demand quantity bid or dso can act as an importer plus exporter in which they are offering the quantity price supply bid and quantity demand bid both so uh, in this work where we are primarily focusing on the second part where dso has the potential capability flexibility to uh, import and as well as export the power in at least in terms of trading if not physically but in terms of trading uh so uh, this is the uh, illustration of the power system that we have considered in our work uh, in this uh, we are having a transmission system to which we have uh, as we have considered a generating con uh, directly connected entities as generating unit constant loads and some flexible loads and uh, other are the dso's so dso's uh, we can have two types of distribution system type a type of distribution system they are supposed communicating only demand bit quantity while in the type b or type b distribution systems uh, they are communicating uh, uh, demand bits as well as uh, the generation offers and the uh, corresponding uh, prices for which uh, at which they are offering their power and further in these type of uh, distribution systems we can have uh, uh, further two types of dgs here we are considering der's uh, dgs particularly Uh, in the category of der so i can have a dg which are offering their generation both in wholesale market and in the local market or there could be dgs uh, which are participating only in the local market so it is purely a wish of a dg operator in which market they want to participate so uh, if suppose a dg can participate uh, 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 like a gamma percentage of its uh, total capacity in the wholesale market and the remaining in the local market Uh, in this whole scenario the uh, roles of dso would be like this like both the types of dso's who are operating their individual local their respective local markets uh, they are taking a pr price which is being uh, given by a ts transmission system operator at the boundary buses that is a coupling buses a pi not and they have to take that price and then the dso has responsibility to aggregate the quantum and price of power to be offered uh, and the quantum of power to be purchased from wholesale market then dso has to evaluate the share of each der and their associated prices plus incentives and uh, also dso schedules demand for its flexible loads and uh, while it is a choice of a der owner whether they want to participate in local market or wholesale market and how much percentage of their total capacity they want to offer for each market so uh, this could be a, time, a sort of a timeline diagram or a coordination uh, structure of a, a coordination scheme where initially uh, all the der's they are providing their demand bids and generation offers for both types of market and uh, uh, dso while clearing the local market considers this these, these bids and the price signal which is derived uh, probably from the past historical data and then they clear their market and then they further provide the total demand to be purchased from wholesale market and the total gen net generation offers they want to made in the wholesale market then the wholesale market gets cleared taking the external bids and offers from directly connected entities and uh, from the dso's uh, bids and offers from dso's and then uh, after uh, getting this market cleared we can have the final dispatches and prices of those uh, other uh, external entities and for all the dso's now again uh, a dso will get a chance to clear its local market with the updated dg offers suppose a dg is not getting selected in the wholesale market so now again uh, an opportunity is being given to a dg owner to participate uh, that remaining or unused quantity into the local market and now uh, dso has a better uh, indication of the price at the boundary buses so they can uh, they can uh, do their uh, scheduling and dispatches more optimally and finally we can have the uh, load and generation dispatches and then later dso can make the financial settlement so uh, the idea of this whole scheme is to motivate uh, der's to participate in wholesale market probably uh, for two reasons maybe there could be an improvement in the social welfare for our distribution system operator 
and uh, the, this, those uh, uh, type one DGs could be incentivized for their for making their participation in the wholesale market. And here comes the mathematics and math, uh, uh, behind this uh, these models. So we have formulated these uh, two market models, TSO and DSO market models, separately, uh, where each of the market model uh, output depends upon the input received from the market clearing of the other model. So here. TSO is suppose while clearing the TSO problem, our objective function is to maximize the social welfare. And uh, I am considered the third uh, term in this objective function represents the offers received by the DERs. And uh, this is kind of an input from uh, DSO market, uh, DSO markets or DA from the DSO and uh, subject to the uh, various constraints on each entity. And this market model is being formulated as a loss compensated DC OPF model uh, taking uh, to consider the impact of losses in the transmission network and uh, secondly DSO market clearing model in this again objective function is to maximize the social welfare and here second term denotes uh, the amount of the uh, price to be paid for purchasing the power from the um, wholesale market and again subject to variety of uh, various constraints and this model has been formulated as a second order conic programming formulation and these all constraints takes care of uh, uh, the power being scheduled in the wholesale market level also while clearing the local market so that congestion management could be done uh, properly effectively. Uh, next, coming to the settlement of type 1 DGs. Now, uh, DGs who are participating in wholesale market, how they can be paid so that uh, they have uh, the option to get an incentive and they are motivated to for participate in wholesale markets. Uh, so uh, for this, uh, for the understanding point of view, uh, we uh, let there be two units of type 1 DGs, uh, DG1 and DG2 uh, in a distribution systems and they are offering their quantities P1 and P2 at a price of beta 1 and beta 2. Uh, such as beta 1 is lesser than beta, beta 1 uh, uh, first unit is a cheaper unit and second one is an expensive unit and the LMP at the boundary was received is suppose pi naught which is being definitely set by the uh, higher uh, higher price units. So there can be multiple scenarios like both of the DGs are not getting cleared in wholesale market or first DG is partially or fully cleared and second one is not cleared because it is an expensive one and uh, first is uh, uh, fully cleared and second one is partially or fully cleared. So in these all the scenarios what matters is how we are uh, how a DSO is paying these DGs. Uh, the surplus amount if suppose they are paying as a payers bid using payers bid, bid method so they are being paid uh, as at the price being offered uh, but what about the remaining surplus amount how it can be distributed among those dgs so there could be a fair uh, enough situation so there could be possibly like five methods uh, for distributing that surplus it can be distributed equally among uh, both the dgs or in Secondly, as in proportion to a payers bid payment. Thirdly, uh, in proportion to their offered prices. Fourth one could be like uh, distribute the surplus can be distributed in proportion to LMPs uh, in the local market obtained in local market or as in proportion to the weighted sum of LMPs. So we have tried to formulate what could be the possible ways of distributing the surplus and which could be the better one. For this analysis, we have just considered a small system uh, uh, in which IEEE 14 bus system is representing a transmission system. And we have connected three distribution, uh, 17 node distribution systems uh, at uh, three boundary at three buses. So uh, 10, 11, like we are having distribution system one, two, and three. First distribution system is a type A distribution system, which is only uh, providing a demand, demand bid to the uh, wholesale market while uh, second and third are type b type of distribution systems in which they are offering both things so every distribution systems are further having multiple dgs connected in their uh, network and here we have considered like two dgs are uh, type uh, one DGs and two DGs are type two like who are only participating in local markets and two are participating in both so here the uh, uh, point to be noted is like uh, we have considered this fourth DG to be the uh, fourth DG in distribution three to be like bit more expensive so that we can analyze the uh, economics going around this particular DG and then again we have considered three time intervals uh, representing uh, off peak load medium peak load and peak load periods uh, across a day. Uh, 
uh, to check the effectiveness of, of this uh, proposed methodology so we can see when uh, at t equal to this the, uh, so this figure represents the inputs and outputs at various stages of a mar this market clearing procedures so uh, coming uh, seeing the final outputs of the local energy market if i we will focus on this particular table then at t equal to 4 when we are having an off peak load then the most expensive unit uh, that is dg4 in distribution system 3 is not getting scheduled in any of the market because we are having an off peak load so uh, at the same time if i am going to a medium uh, peak load uh, duration in this whole capacity is being absorbed in the local market and it is not getting cleared in wholesale electricity market because it may get it may become cheaper and our objective function is not getting maximized while if we we'll move to the uh, peak load period then we can see uh, this uh, quantity is being scheduled uh, the, the desired quantity is being scheduled in the wholesale market as well as in the local market so uh doing all this uh, things coming to the comparison scales firstly we can see the social welfare of the distribution system operator so uh, in case a we have considered type 1 dgs are participating in both markets and in case b uh, type 1 dgs are participating only the local market when they are not giving the option to participate at the wholesale level so we can see we can observe a, a note a significant improvement in the social welfare of distribution system operators and uh, in case 3 we will see at equal to 19 there is a, a note for the improvement in uh, the social welfare of a distribution system operator when they are participating in wholesale market at a peak load period next coming to the incentives to type 1 dgs so where incentives are calculated for both dgs in every each distribution system for dif uh, using different methods and uh, it can be observed from this method 3 uh, is more suitable for uh, distributing the uh, for uh, this incentives among the ders because in method 3 we are using uh, um, the uh, distribution in, uh, on the basis of the prices offered Uh, so here the uh, incentive for dg4 is higher which is actually offering a higher prices in the wholesale market and that is the major player in setting up a higher market clearing price as well so method 3 could be a probable uh, good one to uh, decide to distribute the incentives uh, to the type 1 dgs and uh, this is all from my side thank you and you can for any question uh, or concern or suggestion uh, please contact at this email id or i can take up questions now as well thank you thanks nega the there's already a question in um any comment on the timeline information and clearing with respect to dso tso in the local market uh it's just that uh, whenever we are scheduling to operate our uh, local market in the distribution system there are just one uh, one or two steps ahead that so uh, it's all about fitting uh, suppose it's a one hour interval market in a day ahead so it's all about uh, at what time you want to fit in this structure so it is independent it is completely up to the system operators how they are uh, setting up uh, on that timelines okay are there other questions Mega, I think nice presentation. I have just one or two comments actually. So you are assuming that the market on distribution side will be run by DSO, or will there be any separate entity? Uh, sir, uh, I am assuming it to be a DSO, but uh, uh, as uh, like we are having different models, like in Europe it is different, and in US it is different. So uh, whatever is the current scenario in uh, any uh, specific country, they can have a separate market operators as well. But uh, in our model, it would be preferred if we are having the same uh, DSO as a system and market operator both, so that they can easily take care of all the network constraints and the trading uh, uh, challenges. Yeah. So then, just imagine there are three different entities on transmission side. One is the which is running the power exchange. Second is the system operator. third is the network owner and right. similarly on distribution side if dso is running market then one entity and second is the network uh, provider discoms so yeah. now how whole coordination will uh, will take place like uh, uh, different entities also have to come into picture not only tso dso 
yes uh, yes sir, that's why I, I i mentioned earlier like uh, if for the system and market operator both are the same one then this uh, could be a possible uh, like more yeah, easier easy. way but your assets in tso tso is owning the oh you are saying transmission system operator not iso so you are assuming that they are the also network provider yes uh, but sir uh, if it is like separate entities involved then uh, it's like there will be more steps introduced in between in which communication has to take place so it may uh, create little bit of or it may take a more a broader time uh, time window or it could be like a delayed process so in real time uh, there will be more challenges to implement this scheme okay and your settlement model is for the uh, energy procurement but quite relevant thing will be the flexibility procurement flexible power from psi right, uh, yeah, right so sir that, uh, my next uh, task is to address the flexibility uh, flexibility issues only and like i'm working on the flexibility challenges uh, this work was for energy market only okay good, good. Yeah, that was the confusion yeah. yeah very good thank you sir